Now, one person who has lived through this disaster literally uh, and somebody I've come to respect over the years um, as extremely well organised, and I didn't know that he was living there in actual fact, um, in Eskadale, which seems to have been almost ground zero um, for this tragedy. Um, lots of people affected uh, and other people have died. Um, in other areas, but the Esk Valley would seem to be an ongoing disaster as we talk um, and the effects of uh, Cyclone Gabriel's flood uh, through that particular region. Um, joining us this morning to talk about this is the a former Mayor of Havelock North, uh, a former Member of Parliament for Hastings uh, and somebody who, as I s said earlier, probably one of the most organised people I know in actual fact, um, but has also was enjoying his retirement there with his family and then this devastation occurred. Um, welcome to the show, Jeff Whitaker. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Michael. Good to hear from you. You too, and I'm glad to hear that you are well um, and, and well, I won't say prospering, but surviving through this dreadful ordeal. <laughs> Jeff, I wonder if very, very quickly you can take us through what happened to you, what your circumstance was, um, what, on Monday night? Certainly. Well, first, first up, of course, um, being prepared was <laughs> what I do. And as far as our home's concerned, it's well above, we're 100 metres above the valley floor. Um, we're well contained. We have power, we have well, a generator, we've food, we've got water, we've got everything we need. However, <clears throat> the um, people living on the valley floor are devastated, and that's complete devastation. I, I think the civil defence or whoever was supposed to be looking after um, people were overwhelmed, unexperienced, and out of their depth. Um, to start off with, uh, as we understand it, at half past 11, Hokkariri Girls School was evacuated at night. Um, they evacuated Where's Hokkariri Girls School, Jeff? Uh, that's halfway up the valley. It's right. a Maori Girls okay. School, boarding school, uh, halfway yep. up uh, the Hest Valley. Um, yep. So somebody, I'm not sure who, went and evacuated them, and they evacuated a cul-de-sac, a small group of people living next door to the Hest Valley Park. They got evacuated at half past 11. Our emergency cell phone went off at half past five. We got up and looked, because we can see the entire valley, it was wall-to-wall -wall water. Absolutely too late to save anybody. And we could um, see so as it got lighter. Yep. Yeah, so so um, you just to Come clarify again. this, at, at half past 11, Jeff, um, the civil defence were evacuating some people. Uh, you've mentioned the school school and a cul-de-sac, but yep. they were not. They were not evacuating evacuating anybody else that you're aware of. As far as we understand, I'm not sure it was civil defence. Even somebody was evacuating or oh. warned the people to get out, and and they must have uh, to to. Uh, I think there's no. Uh, a large number of girls of the girls' school. So somebody must have organised that and got them out to somewhere. I don't know where, but that happened at half past 11. And, and the you're saying that at 5.30... At, at 5.30 in the morning, yep. six hours later, which, of course, was far too late. Six hours um, later, well, it, it was... It, it, the valley was totally flooded. Yep. So when you talk about the emergency warning, Jeff, um, is is that something that comes from civil defence automatically through phones in the Hawke's Bay, is it? Well, of course, we're, we're supposed to be set up for tidal waves. Um, and so, yeah, it's automatic. They disconnected their sirens a couple of months ago. We could hear the sirens from here all along the coast. They disconnected them. So if your cell phone wasn't on... <laughs> you didn't or get any warning just be, at all, right? Okay. Um, I think I think when we do the review of of this, there is also a great deal of anger, as I understand, in Napier proper, 
at how long it's taken to restore power, internet and cell phone reception um, and the lack of information that's coming from civil defence um, at all. Is that a frustration that you feel as well? Oh, totally frustrated. I'm sitting on a, a high point on the S Bridge at the at the top of the S Valley uh, looking at Napier and I can get a cell phone connection. That's the only place where this area can have a connection. We're told to have a radio, to have our phones ready, uh, to listen to cell of, uh, go to their website for civil defence. Mm. You can't do it if you haven't got um, Wi-Fi or you haven't got, yeah, if you haven't got a connection. Um, and the complaint has been that Vodafone, who we're connected to, are useless. They've gone down. No attempt to put us back on the on the uh, grid. There's a little bit of assistance from Spark, and that's it. Mm. Hopeless. Um, and, and I'm hearing that anger very much through uh, large numbers of people in Napier as well um, and across the region. Oh. It's, it, it, as I understand it also, it means that um, things like petrol stations um, have run out of petrol, supermarkets, pharmacies, doctors, many of them closed their doors in actual fact due to the outages. Um, if and, and then, of course, you're sort of trapped too. You, the road, Jeff, we just to explain we, we to others... We can't get out. That's just yeah. the question I was going to ask you. Um, you're there until what? There's a road suddenly <laughs> appearing out of somewhere. <laughs> well, the... the the roads have been closed. Um, the uh, if the um, motorway, we call it, the uh, expressway, one of the bridges shifted, as I believe, um, 200 millimetres on its foundations, so it was closed. The, uh, the crossing at Waitangi in Clive, that was closed. Uh, then it was opened, and then they discovered that it had uh, cracks in it, uh, so it was closed. There's no information to anybody which way they should turn. It, we were told to listen so just, to the radio. But, and Yeah. 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 Sorry, c carry on, Jeff. Sorry, my apology. I interrupted you. What, 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 that's all right. One of the, one of the uh, edicts has been, listen to your radio. Well, you tune into the local radio stations. Oh, this is hits. We're going to give you the greatest hits, you know. And then they come on with some news. Uh, anything but helpful news. You would have expected that, that civil defence or somebody would have taken over a radio station and be continually broadcasting the, the, the news of what you can do, where you can go. But no, to get, to get any news is, is just hopeless. Mm. No, and you would have expected that. You're absolutely not, right. You would. Ex I mean, that's the only way that you're going to get information yeah. is, is through your radio. Um, yeah. So, Jeff, but then, going back to this... Of course they you, say, you, yep. Carry on. No, you go. You go. Um, yeah, you, you would have expected. Here they are saying you must have a radio, you must have a cell phone, and, mm. and they're useless. Our um, Hawks Bay today, who you know very well, um, they get published or printed in Auckland, and and they ship yes. down every day. They can't they can't publish a paper. They're going to have a special one printed today, but no news through the paper because they can't get their trucks through with the newspapers that they want to print last night. <laughs> yes, that's the irony. I was actually it's really interesting, Jeff. Just before I did the show this morning, I went back and looked at the 1931 earthquake in Napier. And within 48 hours, there were newspapers being distributed in advising people yep. in Napier and Hastings. And here you are four days later, and there won't be any newspaper today. I think they're meant to get, trying to get out one tomorrow, as, as I understand it at the moment. But they're saying they're going to have trouble with distribution. Well, I'm sure they had trouble yeah. with distribution in 1931 too. They, they were more prepared in that earthquake in 1931 than we are today. People were sitting on their hands. The, the, the annoying part that I found was if they knew they should have or they were evacuating people at half past 11 
out of the East Valley, they should have evacuated everybody. There's, there's no defence against that. <laughs> Absolutely hopeless. We've lost lives because of it. When we woke up in the morning, we could see people sitting on roofs waving. And and so I went down to the school down here, East Valley School, and it, they were just milling around. They had uh, RVs. They, they thought they could go out and get them, but the waters had, uh, had gone down, and they were too scared to put these boats in the water because they might hit a fence. The local uh, mm. Ericsson Honda came down with jet skis and said, let us go out, we'll pick them up. Oh, no, 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 we couldn't take that risk. I mean, we've got I've a White heard... Island syndrome. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard shocker. that frustration too. Yeah, no, and yesterday, Jeff, we heard uh, somebody who was stopped from taking their digger into the Esk Valley to rescue a family, and he just said, bugger off, I'm going, and he did rescue that family. Yep. Um, what were they meant to be doing? Left to their own f to fate to die. Jeff, can you just take us through the oh. Esk Valley, please? Um, it's just the, the Esker Valley, as I remember it, and you, this is a long time ago, was a, a particularly idyllic valley. It was, um, it was the main route from Napier, um, and you went through this lovely valley. Um, it didn't have an awful lot of people in. Over the last 20 or 30 years, ha have there been a lot of developments on the valley floor, have there? Well, the, 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 all the valley floor, any useful land has been developed. There was... Um, Esk Valley uh, Vineyard, there's, there's uh, yep. um, Linden Estate, um, That's right. and there's various other yep, um, various other developments. It was totally developed. All those orchards had gone in, and people had built houses along the road. Um, there were traditional houses there. There's the old church. I guess that was flooded again. The, the thing... Uh, it, it, I guess it has always been a possibility that it would flood. Uh, mm. I mean, it flooded, I don't know how many years ago. It did flood right across. It went into the church. Everybody was very aware of that. It's not like, but you would have expected the regional council to be monitoring the, the, the river conditions. I mean, That's exactly the we next question warned. I was going to ask you. That's the next question I was going to ask you because uh, uh, my understanding, uh, certainly I'm on the Otago Regional Council, we monitor rivers all the time. So if something like yep. this is going to get into a flood, we're aware of it instantly and there are a series of alarms that automatically go off as a consequence of that. Although maybe, I don't know, that's a good thing for us to look at now, whether or not they're electronically linked. But um, was, is, is the Esk River actually monitored by the Regional Council? Who knows? I mean, ah, okay. if it was, if it was, then, well, somebody should have been looking at it. They know this thing floods. The Tongoya Valley, uh, about 15 years ago, I'm guessing, um, had a cloudburst up in the hills, or whatever you call it, and the Tongoya Valley was completely full. It was flooded from side to side. I believe it's in a similar condition today. Looking at some of the photographs, um, the Devil's Elbow and the road is completely um, demolished. The trucks sitting at the bottom of the Devil's Elbow completely in, in, enveloped in in rubbish and and slips. Um, mm. This isn't un, 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 it's, it's not a a thing that's never been heard of in Hawke's Bay. It's an expected event, and where were the people who we pay? Uh, through our rates or whatever, monitoring this nowhere, home and bed. Mm. No, no, listen, Jeff, I, I, I share your concern because you're absolutely right. As I was saying yesterday, the, the Heratonga Plains, the whole of the Hawke's Bay, um, has been created by generations, hundreds of years of flooding. Um, that's what created the Heratonga Plains. Yep. I'm looking now, it Jeff, did. just to answer your question, just to look, answer your question, I'm looking now at the Hawke's Bay Regional Council website, and yes, they do monitor the Esk River at a place called Berry Road. Do you know that one at all? Uh, and also yeah, at yeah, Waipunga Bridge. Up. And Waipunga yes, Bridge. that's right. Um, so they okay. were both if being I, monitored. I yep. And I'm looking also that that peaked at, um, well, off the, off the chart almost, um, at, uh, on the 14th of February. 
um, at a massive level. So clearly the monitoring was occurring at the time. It's just that the alarm systems that are connected with it clearly didn't work, if there were any. Well, <laughs> who takes responsibility? <laughs> I know um, I, 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 I uh, grew grapes for I had a vineyard out, one of the first ones out of Marakako, and my vineyard uh, out there was on the old Nararoro um, riverbed. That was mm-hmm. brilliant. I mean, the whole of of, uh, of Roy's Hill is on riverbed. Now, they, there was a, a cloud burst or there was an event in the hills, and that river and I'm not sure the date, going back some time, the river changed, uh, instead of coming down uh, through uh, Bridge Par, it changed and it went through um, Roy's Hill. And mm. it, it changed. I mean, these events are predictable. They do happen. As you say, the whole of the plains was formed by this sort of thing. And people mm. were not in the right places were not prepared. Jeff, um, looking ahead now for you personally and your family, as you say, um, and that's, you know, I was just saying to people, I've never met anybody as organised as you and you certainly (laughs) have certainly uh, demonstrated that this morning. Um, But um, how long do you expect to be where you are before you can get out? Oh, I can, I can get out. Um, <clears throat> I went check. I've got a, a yacht on the marina. I went down to check the yacht the other day. We got oh, out. Okay. Um, we checked. And we checked the yacht. We came back, and and we couldn't get back to our home because the banks of the, of the S Valley uh, outlet had broken, and the whole road was flooded. We borrowed a ute uh, and and came home. I can get out, but. Um, to go, I'm still running the post shop in Havelock North. I sold my pharmacy. I can't go to Havelock. I can't be sure I can get there. The Clive Bridge has been closed. They opened that, mm. Uh, mm. and then they closed it. There was a queue there back to the Marine Parade of people waiting something like two and a half hours. Uh, they've now opened the expressway because they had a bridge movement there, and you can go across by Taradale and get to Parkway Road by the back way into Hastings. But none of that yesterday was anywhere to be um, be reported on. You couldn't get that news. You didn't know. And I wasn't going to waste petrol sitting in a queue uh, for um, <laughs> forever trying to get to Havelock. I've got no communications with Havelock at all. Jeff, um, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I appreciate the time, the effort, the energy you've taken to join us. Um, one final question. The folk who are living on the valley floor, that when we've seen these photos of the devastation, um, are you expecting, I'm sorry to raise this issue, further fatalities from down there? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there were people that they couldn't, they didn't get to. Uh, there was the one case where they, they um, shifted. They were house sitting the house. They shifted and, and broke through the ceiling, got into the roof, and mm. then they were hit by a container and they were thrown into the water. The, the woman died. Uh, he was re- he was rescued, but um, there will be. There's got to be other fertilities because they don't know. They weren't there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Jeff, I thank you very much. You're very welcome. Jeff, thank you. And listen, I appreciate the time, as I said, and um, the very best of luck to you. Um, We'll keep in touch, obviously, but I thank you for your time this morning, Jeff. I wish you well. Look after yourself, mate. Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much. Okay. Not a problem. Um, Okay, thank you. That is Jeff Whitaker um, on the top, if you've heard, of the ESC um, expressing a frustration that seems to be almost universal throughout Hawke's Bay this morning. And can I just for everybody tell you, because I'm looking at it right now, that the Hawke's Bay Regional Council do monitor the ESC River um, at two places, at Berry Road 
and Waipanga Bridge. In fact, you personally can go on to the Hawke's Bay Regional Council website. You can if you don't live in Hawke's Bay. Um, and, and you'll see the dramatic and massive escalation of water that clearly went down there. Now, you'll forgive me for saying, but this is what it says on the Hawke's Bay Regional Council website. We have a number of web webcams set up on bridges in Hawke's Bay. You can see these on the table with this icon, and there's an icon of a camera. The sites send in hourly images during daylight hours to our Napier office. The colour bands on the bridge piers at the um, bridge sites indicate the water levels. Green's an annual event. I'm looking at that now. Um, uh, and then they say orange is a one in five year event and red is a one in 20 year event. And the yellow mark is um, on one particular road of a staff use only. The four metre mark on the pier at East River at Waipunga Bridge indicates an annual event and the five metre mark indicates an orange one and five year event. Now I'm looking at that graph as I look to you now as I've said, it is off the scale. Um, and the other um, bridge that I, or the um, Esk River at Berry Road um, is similarly off the scale. Um, so in other words, they did monitor it. For some strange reason, in the middle of the night, they admit that it probably isn't going to be of any use to you because it's not daytime. And of course, there's nobody working at night time at the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, they go home at five o'clock. So it's obvious, it appears to me, that if between the age hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., Monday to Friday, there's a disaster, they'll probably be aware of it. But if it isn't in those hours, in other words, the two-thirds, no, over two-thirds um, of existence of uh, any given week, you're on your own. And they were.